open your Bibles to the second epistle of Paul to the Thessalonians. Chapter 2. Chapter 2 reads, I'm still in the rapture section of the last day series. Now we already covered that the rapture is not going to be a secret rapture. It's not going to be hidden from anyone. You're not going to be secretly raptured and transported first to meet the Lord in the air and then go to heaven. Like I said, if you're new and you haven't heard any of the other rapture messages, then I suggest you do that. Because I've been laying on the groundwork that proves what you've been listening to and what you've been reading is based on Christian science fiction theory. Do I believe in a rapture? I believe we're going to meet the Lord in the air? Yeah, absolutely. But not the way it's taught. Verse 1, chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. Let's read that again. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. When you read through this letter, you can see Paul's excitement and joy when he's putting this letter together to the Thessalonians, the church of Thessalonica. He was excited at the very thought of Jesus' soon return. He was so excited about it that he devoted the entire second chapter of second Thessalonians to the events that would occur in the last days. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. Circle that word beseech in this verse. The, the word beseech normally be used in the Greek, commonly used in other letters that Paul wrote and even other letters that other apostles wrote. Parakelio, and don't worry about the spelling now because it's not a it's Greek to me lesson. But not that the word Paul used here. He used a different Greek word than parakelio. He used a word that actually means in the Greek. I'll probably make this as a Greek to me lesson in the future, but not tonight. You don't need to write this down. Beseech in the Greek that the word Paul used means to ask or to make a strong request. To ask or make a strong request. That's what Paul was doing here. What he was doing is calling the listeners to cautiously listen to what he was saying in regards to what he was writing about. He wanted to make sure, he wanted to make sure that whoever was going to be reading this and whoever read this to people that were listening, that they would pay close attention to what he was saying. Because he was speaking about the coming of the Lord. And the word beseech carries an understanding also that the information was important enough to listen to get someone's attention to get someone to take what he was saying seriously and let what he was saying 
sink in and make a strong impact impact in their lives. You got it? Well, hopefully you wrote some notes on that. Let's move on. Paul knew what he was facing because false doctrines were starting to circulate about the coming of the Lord even in his day. Now amplify that many times over in our day. But he had to deal with it. So he wanted to get their attention so it could make a strong impact in their lives what he was saying. And what he was saying is, Jesus is coming back. And he's going to come back for his church. The people that he calls out and chosen for a future gathering, which we already covered. And he wanted people not just to listen but to act in a, in a way that they were expectingly, expecting, excuse me, constantly his coming. You got it? They wanted, he wanted them to be in a constant awareness of the Lord's return. I challenge you. Start talking to a bunch of Christians out there. Yeah, the Lord will return some soon, but they're not taking it seriously. Some don't even believe it. They don't believe the Lord soon return. First, the meeting in the air, and then joining up with His army to come and usher in the new age, or the next age. Then he goes on in this particular verse, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming, by the coming, circle that word, coming. The Greek is P-A-R-O-U-S-I-A. P-A- R-O-U-S-I-A. What does this word mean? What does it emphasize? <clears throat> Most people just translate it, well, the second coming, or a coming of this, or a coming of that. Well, that's the unfortunate part about Greek dictionaries and lexicons. you got to dig a little deeper, because this word also puts a special emphasis on the presence of the Lord. Write that down. It emphasizes the presence of the Lord. The coming emphasizes the presence of the Lord. Especially the presence of Jesus that can be felt among His people. What does that mean? Well, here, in this verse, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's used to describe the strong presence of God that will be felt when the Lord Jesus returns to gather people to Himself. I read that verse. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. What this is saying in the original language, what the word implies is that the outcalled ones, the church, will feel a it's almost, I can't even use a word to describe it, a phenomenal divine presence 
when it's time for Jesus to gather to himself at the end of this age. You ever watch that movie Independence Day? I don't know, it was about, I don't know, maybe 20 plus years ago. It's about aliens invading this planet. They have a huge, a massive mothership orbiting this planet. And they have the, all these smaller, lesser ships coming down this planet and it blows cities up because it wants to take over this planet, eliminate life on earth and take advantage of the resources that they will drain for their purposes and then move on. Well one of those scout spaceships in earlier times before this evasion crashed and inside it had aliens. Now, the aliens didn't survive but the scout spaceship did survive but they couldn't do anything with it it was an underground bunker in a mountain somewhere and <clears throat> it just lied there dormant but when the mothership, many years later, arrived to seize this planet and its resources and eliminate the people of this planet, that scout alien spaceship came alive. Came alive. And of course, if you didn't see the movie, the players that went in this scout spaceship came up with the idea that they could fly this thing back now that it's alive to outer space where the mothership was and blow up the mothership and everything else will be destroyed as far as the aliens go. What I'm trying to say is when that mothership came back that scout spaceship alien spaceship came alive when the Lord returns or the near near return at the very few moments or maybe hours or maybe days or even weeks or months before his return what the Greek is sending here is the church that still exists in this age will feel a presence of Jesus' return before he even gets here when Christ will gather us together unto him. What this means is that as we come closer to the return of the Lord Jesus, the coming, the strong presence of Jesus will be strongly felt and sensed among the alcohol ones. Now, this increasingly ever growing presence of Jesus, and I know he's, Jesus is sent it a, a comfort, the Holy Spirit, and there's the, that certain type of presence, but this is something even an additional that those of us who are alive are going to feel if you understand what the Greek is singing here concerning his presence that will only get stronger and stronger the closer we get to his return and we'll know when that gathering to himself will take place you got that? What about when Paul speaks of our gathering unto him in this verse? I 
this particular Greek group of words, you'll see that in other books outside of the Bible, such as the Maccabees, which has a good example of it, and I'll come back to it when I do it's a Greek to me on this subject. It refers, our gathering, to a moment in the future when Jesus will finally gather his people together to himself. And that's what's used here in Second Thessalonians 2 1. The word gathering together which describes the future time period or moment in time when the Lord will not just gather but quickly gather or let's just say collect his people together to himself at the end of this age this age when that time comes God's going to gather people quickly together collect them up in the assembly to meet him in the air what a glorious moment in time that's going to be. Just think about it. So what is Paul saying in Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1? When the time gets so close that we can feel his presence, almost as he's already here, outside what you feel with the Holy Spirit, the moment that we've all been waiting for, the moment that we all been longed for, he will gather us, uh, all of us, that are his chosen, the out-called ones that have put their trust and confidence in Jesus that are still alive at that time. And in a moment, he will finally gather us to himself. That's what Paul is trying to communicate here in this one verse. Now there's people that scoffed in his time. There was mockers. And Peter, you go to 2 Peter. He deals with it in chapter 3. Peter warns us at the end of this age, this last age before the next age, which I've covered before, is coming. There'll be many scoffers. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 4, and saying, where is this promise of His coming? See, they were mocking us, and there were scoffers back even then. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation or from the original formation. Scoffers who mocked at the promise of Jesus' return is what's being referred here. They're probably saying if Jesus is going to come back, he probably already done so. But where is he? Knowing this first, there shall come the last day scoffers in verse 4. walking after their own, literally, desires, and saying, where is the promise of His coming? The word scoffers there in the Greek describes people who make fun of another through mockery. Through mockery. It means and it carries the idea of someone that's ridicules or disdains or scorns someone else for what they believe in. It also meant that you're playing a game. By impersonating 
impersonating someone in a silly and an exaggerated way. That's what we're doing. That's what Peter warns about. In fact, you can find the same kind of word in the New Testament when they were mocking Jesus. When they're mocking him and they were smoting him. Same Greek word there in Luke chapter 22. where they stage a comedy of what not only Jesus did, but what they heard he did, mocking him. Probably playing games, as that word defines as also. Probably laying on the floor and quivering Challenging Jesus to deliver him of a demon or to heal a sickness or to pretend like he was healing us a blind person. They were playing games mocking him and beating him right before he went to Calvary. They did this all to make fun of him and what supposedly he did and who he claimed he was. That's the kind of word Peter was used here when he wrote this, this letter. Peter uses the same word to depict the mockers in these last days. That they would make fun of those who would believe in Jesus' return. The second coming. They're mocking. Well, if he was going to return, why hasn't he returned yet? After all, it's been 2,000 years. You'd think he'd return by now. You're just hanging on to a false hope. You're a fool. You're a dreamer. You need to be checked into a... A psych hospital, the mental ward, and have yourself checked out. Because no rational person would ever think that that promise is actually true. Because it was true, he would already came. That's the behavior of scoffers, my friend. These people don't just don't mock because of the occasion to mock. They mock because that's part of their habit. That's part of their life. They haven't had a change of mind about Jesus. They're living under the delusion that Satan has them under. And they'll keep making fun of believers. They'll keep mocking them. But that doesn't change one iota. Jesus is coming for his believers. He will gather his believers to himself. No matter what people might think, it's going to happen. Well, that's because you put your trust and confidence in Jesus. Right. You are correct. And that's where it's going to stay. And that's where it's placed. In Jesus. And he's going to arrive. And I want to be ready for that arrival. We are told. Been there before, you don't have to go there. In Mark 13. To be ready. And to be watchful. In Mark 13, verse 32, verse 34, verse 35. Not, not verse 32, verse 33, verse 34, 35, and 37. Take heed, watch, and pray, for you not know what the time is. Well, let's back it up to verse 32. But of the day and the hour knoweth no man, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch, 
and pray, for ye know when the time ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to what again? Watch. Watch ye therefore, in verse 35, for you know not when the master of the house cometh even at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find yourself sleeping. And watch, I say unto you, unto all, watch. There's a lot of watching going on. There's a lot of preparation, there's a lot of watching. But those who are not prepared, and that's my next message, will have a sudden surprise of what's coming. But those who are will have a suddenly experience of awareness of a supernatural presence of Jesus like they never had before if you're still alive at his coming. The closer we come to his return the more strongly this presence of God will be felt in our midst. That's what Paul was saying. When you break down and analyze verse 1 in the original language, when you dig in and go deeper into the Greek, that is what Paul was communicating. We're going to have, let's call it a signal, which is the strong presence of God, which will signal us that it's just about time for Jesus to come back. It's just about time for Him to gather and collect us to Himself. So, in these future days that are coming, shut your ears to the mockers. Ignore those ones that make fun of you for believing in Jesus' soon return. And be ready to recognize. And I'll finish with this. Because you're watching and you're prepared be ready to recognize the moments of the presence of God become stronger because of His presence. At that return, like that space alien ship, the scout, scout space alien ship, something energized it to know the mothership was near. Well, we're going to be energized with the presence of God, the presence of Jesus, in His nearness like never before. When that moment happens, we have all the indications that Jesus return is upon us. Do I believe Jesus is coming? Absolutely. I hope in my lifetime. And what I'm doing is preaching to anyone that will listen, not just the gospel, but everything I can for, that comes out of God's word to the lost, so they won't be left behind or left out when Jesus gathered his church to himself. And that's the mission of this ministry. That's what we're all about. There's something very unique coming. I haven't even gone into the stars concerning that arrival time, that period of time when we could expect the Lord's return. Now, I know I covered a lot in a short amount of time. But I just wanted to lay this down tonight to give you an idea what to expect as the time gets closer and closer to His return. 
you're not going to be clueless. You're going to be drawn to that presence of his return. It's almost like something's pulling at you and you don't know what's holding you back but when it's released and he says come up hither it happens it happens quickly and it comes with force your body will be changed in the twinkle of an eye to a glorified body and you'll meet the Lord Jesus in the air to join his army for the next phase in closing out this age and ushering the next. Now if you got that, I want to hear from you. Play the song. <laughs>